Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Hillbilly Therapy with Jake Hill and Dan Fraley. This is your weekly, or sometimes bi-weekly, where you send in your questions, we answer them, and we just try to give you a little bit of laugh, and sometimes, maybe, possibly, kinda, a little help. Well, I, th- I think we might as well, Dan, we might as well just get started this week, because we, we got some pretty good questions in from our viewers. So, uh, our first question for the week is, do you think nudist camps need pickup lines? So basically what this person is asking is, do you think people that walk around naked need to use pickup lines? Need to? No. Do they? Yeah. I, I think it's a matter of just... Listen, I'm not saying the people in nudist colleges are horrible sex freaks. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is they're not helping their case. If you're going around and you got everything swinging in the breeze... Your pickup line should be, you like it, and anything beyond that, the answer should be your answer. You're like, if they say yes, then there you go. It's like a dating show for nymphomaniacs. It should be very easy. So, yeah, I don't think they need them, but I think they can use them. I, I just, I, I'm just more curious, like, what, what is a pickup line in a news camp? Because, honestly, I mean, it's kind of, you got to get used to it at some point, just because, you know, you you're going to be so close to each other at that point when you've just been walking around naked. You just got to look at Bob and be like, Bob, my stick. I mean, really. I mean, it's there. It's harder to lie. What? I mean, it's harder to lie. If you're wearing clothes, guys can say whatever they want, and you don't know until you get to the bedroom. You're walking around free-balling it in the middle of the middle of the day. you got nothing to hide. Now, but see, that's the thing, though. That The guy you got to worry about? Small dick. That's still happy. Like, you obviously know why Big, why, why Big Dick Johnson over there is happy. You're like, I get that. But, you know, look, looks like it's trying to go back inside, and he's still walking around with a smile. You're like, something's going on in his head. Well, it's one or the other. He's rich or he's a serial killer. You don't know which one, but you'll find out later. I feel like in a nudist colony, you'd find out pretty quick. Plus, like that, where do you keep your money in a nudist colony? The same place you keep it in prison. Oh, oh, that was wrong. <laughs> well, we're gonna go on to the uh, the ne- sp- speaking of uh, hurting people's buttholes. Uh, our next question is gonna be a little bit of some controversy. Oh, it's gonna be, be- good. yes. We haven't had controversy in hillbilly therapy yet, so huh, that's apparently gonna change because. This person asks, what is our thought on the Colin Ka- Kaepernick <laughs> <laughs> Nike controversy? A lot of vowels in that name. Yes. And um, now, mind you, Dan, you're not much of a uh, sports fan, so no. I don't know how much you know about the Colin Kaepernick there you go. Nike, <laughs> Nike controversy. But basically what happened was about a week ago, they, uh, they aired a... Uh, Commercial for their new, uh, uh, com- new commercial for Nike that caused a lot of controversy because it it featured a former NFL player that started the kneeling during the national anthem that's caused like all kinds of problems in this country. Um, he's who started the whole kneeling thing, and they're now featuring him in a Nike ad. I mean, we we had it got a little crazy. I mean, we had people burning shoes and cutting socks, and it got kind of dumb. Yeah, I, I, here's what I think: you can believe what you want politically. That's not the issue. The whole thing is in the middle of this, as as people are cutting, literally cutting the logos off their pants, off their shorts, of the Nike logo, so they're mutilating their own clothes. Uh, there have been a, already at least one case of someone who went to the hospital because they set fire to the shoes, the Nike shoes, they were currently wearing. If that's on the other side, I will take whatever your side is doing. The other side setting fire to their own shoes while standing in them. Yeah, I'll take kneeling. I'll take barbecuing the American flag. I will take eating raw bald eagle. I will take anything over the guy who sets fire to his own shoes while standing in them any day of the week. See, my, I guess I, 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 I've got two different, you know, <laughs> opinions that kind of 
it throws me off because, like that, I understand the whole no kneeling during the national anthem because, I mean, we, we were raised, you know, at a time where, you know, you did the Pledge of Allegiance in school. I mean, did you do it in school, Dan? Absolutely. I went to a small hillbilly school. Of course I did. See, like that, I went to Catholic school and everything where we, you know, we did we did it even in Catholic school. We didn't have to do it in Catholic school, but I guess it's one of those, I mean, we're raised that way, but I actually, I did a little bit of research um, about it, and actually I found out a couple different things. That one, I actually found out that, uh, that's that's what the, uh, I'm sorry, real quick, the uh, the ad uh, their whole slogan that they were going with was believe in something even if you sacrifice everything. Because what you may, may not know is, since you're not a sports fan, Colin Kaepernick hasn't had a job in yeah. two years yeah. because, well, one, I, I hate to break this, and this is where they make it controversial, he didn't lose his job because he ne- he kneeled. He lost his job because he sucked. <laughs> Ah, yes. The Bosworth effect. Yes. I mean, he sucked. Then it didn't help. Because what's funny is, the two guys that started the whole kneeling thing, both uh, were players for the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. Eric Reed and Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. They're actually suing the NFL right now Mm -hmm. uh, over basically saying that it's because they spoke out that they're not working. Mm-hmm. So that's where the where the controversy is, which is ironic because Nike is the main sponsor of the NFL. <laughs> like <laughs> irony, but uh, he uh, both of which are, are unemployed right now. Mm-hmm. Now Eric Reed, <clears throat> Eric Reed's actually a pretty you know pretty decent. I believe he plays safety. Uh, he's actually a pretty decent player. So mm-hmm. that one's more of a loss. Colin Kaepernick was just awful. Yeah. So I wouldn't exactly say you know he. Well, this is he, this is he, he sacrificed everything, and but. this is not the first. This is not the first um, example of this. Actually, there was an example back in the '90s. There was a guy who played for the Golden State Warriors named Muhammad Abdul Rauf. He would not. There, there's a whole lot of A's. There's a lot of vowels. <laughs> That's like 15 A's. <laughs> he was a Muslim player. He converted to Islam, and he played for the Golden State Warriors, if I remember correctly. And he would not stand up during the um, during the anthem. Now, as opposed to football, in basketball, they actually did the national anthem in the stadium, like they do in hockey, on the thing, and it wasn't a brand new thing, had been doing it for decades. Uh-huh. He sat down one night, sat on his bench, and would not stand up, so the NBA finds him. So, they find him, I don't know what they find him, but whatever it was, they find him a lot. And he stayed out, I swear, he sat down for a handful of games, and then he started standing up because the fines got too much. So, it's not unprecedented for this to happen. Uh, I think the backlash, like, there was backlash against him, but he wasn't fired. He wasn't, I don't even remember back then when there was this big, it was one guy, but it wasn't like this big thing that it is now. Now it's a Facebook group. It's ridiculous now. And then, see, I think that's one of the biggest problems, because in doing some of uh, the research about it, I found out, do you know when it was first required for mm-hmm. an NFL player to be on the field during the National Anthem? I'm gonna let you pick a pick a year. If I remember correctly, it was 2009. That, that is right? correct. Yeah, that's a re- it's a new thing. Not even damn, is that ten? I'm just too dumb to do math. <laughs> and not even ten years ago. It's ain't math time. It's podcast time. Yes. So that means ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Less than ten years ago 10. was when they were required. Yeah. But the problem isn't so much the kneeling. Problem is it is the way that. And like you said, that the guy uh, in the '90s, you know, didn't have the controversy behind doing the same thing. Is I find it funny that this whole kneeling thing keeps getting brought up back in the media when other shit goes down. Mm -hmm. Because now, mind you, a week ago, right before this ad suddenly started getting talked about, I believe we had some other problems with uh, a certain church. And then all of a sudden, it was just like, I pray to God something uh, hell's happened. And then it was yeah. just like, what? Nike's going to feature Colin Kaepernick? Yeah. Oh, well, this better be story number one. Yeah, That's there like, were some there were some thank you baskets sent his way. Oh, I guarantee it. I, the heat office. Woo! Yeah, I mean, and that's what's funny is I think the media, we 
turned these into these. Oh my gosh, I, I can't believe this is happening. This is a big deal. Di- it's not. Yeah. We've had different, you know, protests for years. Oh, absolutely. But we have now with Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, is MySpace still a thing? I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, Ashton Kutcher bought, or I think Ashton Kutcher bought it. It's now for shitty bands. I don't know. Oh, well, that's good for them. There's a tumbleweed rolling through it. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, all these different social medias that you can't get away. Stories that used to be ticker stories at the bottom of the TV are oh, now, yeah. holy crap, it's a big deal. Mm. Kinds of things. And I, I think that's more of the problem. And then the funny thing is, then the commercial aired. Yeah. The commercial had Mr. Mr. Kaepernick just talking. Yeah. They showed him in a, in a very nice suit. So at least yeah. Nike, you know, at least Nike is apparently, I really hope they come out with the Kaepernick suit. Well, a very nice suit. And, and, it's the most- and, and as a guy that has, you know, curly hair, a beautiful, beautiful afro. So if somebody can share this to Colin Kaepernick's uh, Twitter, beautiful afro. But uh, then they also featured a bunch of kids. Their entire thing was believe in your dreams. Yeah, so it's the least offensive y- commercial yes, in the history. That of we Nike can all agree. You've got you've got wrestlers with no legs. Yep. You know wheelchair basketball. Guess what? Right here, right now. If you're listening to this, this is what I need you to do. When you see the next little thing that pops up. It says, oh, Colin Kaepernick ate a hot dog. Holy crap. Tell him, shut the hell up about it. Because guess what? It's no longer a controversy. All right, now that we got a little uh, serious there for a while, and I I feel like there's a chance that there's going to be pitchforks uh, coming. coming our way. And the scary thing is, we are out in the country. There's a lot of so there's a lot more pitchforks. There's a lot of red hats coming our way. I'm just gonna put it that way. Oh, good God! They're about to they're about to make make both our rear ends great again. <laughs> like, who daddy? No, I'm I'm dead serious though. If we if we can get Donald Trump to mention us in a oh, uh, in a press conference, because I'm not gonna lie, I said his name. I, it was it. Do you have to say his name three times before he mentions you? Yeah, you say it three times, and then Jeff Sessions shows up and grants a wish. It's a whole complicated thing. Okay, well, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Okay, then it's gonna happen. Yes, give it time. All right, sweet. Maybe we can end up uh on a on some type of a roast or something. I don't know. <laughs> At this point, I'm just whoring myself out there. So Donald Trump. I know you like horse. You don't even have money. To <laughs> I, I, I know you like them horse. He so. does like horse. You read his Christmas card. Ah. Uh, sad thing is I'm Republican, too. <laughs> That's the worst part. Makes you proud, doesn't it? It does, actually. <laughs> In a very weird way. Like, mm. like I need a shower, but it was worth it. <laughs> Whoa. It's like, it's like going mud, mudding with your fat neighbor. You're like, it's, it's going to be gross and smell, but damn it, it was fun. All right. That was very specific. You were the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our we're at our last question for the week. So, of course, we like to call this last call. Question uh, is, what is the best way to quit your job? I'm going to let you start off with this oh, one, because this, one, this one's going to be fun. Well, I think it, I look at it this way, and I've, I've talked to my wife about this. Um, I think on how you end a job is whether or not you plan on using them as a reference in the future. If you work at a place for like two months, and it's some nine to five video store job and you hate it and you're pretty sure your boss is smoking crack in the bathroom and you're like hey even if i get it even if i get into the job i'm not gonna let anyone know i used to work at this this hell hole if it's one of those places i think the quit i think you should quit your job in the most public way humanly possible you should find a way within your budget to make it public whether it's changing the sign outside outside of the place with those little marquee signs making it a dirty riddle or Find a way to get on a PA system and tell everyone who's sleeping with who. Whatever it is. If it's a place that you're just never going to go back even as a customer, make it public. Make it horrible. And just let people know that on your way out, you're going to set off some fires. Not literal, but just some metaphorical. If there's some 
uh, some workmates that you know are sleeping together and no one else knows, on the way out, just let everybody else know. And then watch the place metaphorically burn down around you. That's my advice. Good golly gee. He apparently has, like, been waiting for that question. So seriously, if you sent that question in, I believe Dan appreciates because he apparently, I'm not kidding, his face is red right now from that whole he did that all in one breath. That's my dream. Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna add in. Th- this is gonna be a fun one. This is what I want at least one person to do, and I kid you not. Okay, this is gonna be my challenge. If if one of y'all can actually come in, if you're gonna quit your job, at least make it be worthwhile. We may actually bring you. We may just come to your house and do a uh, episode of this. Cause if you can do this one, you ready for it? This is what you do. All right, especially if you work in an office. Especially if you work in an office. Even funnier if you don't. But uh, if you work in an office, come in one on the day that you're going to quit. Bring in a cooler of beer. Put a beer on the counter. Open it. Of course, your boss is going to come up to you and be like, Gary, you can't drink at work. And just all of a sudden, and this is where you got to do it. You got to get really mad. He's be like, you know what? I am sick and tired of these rule changes. I can't take it. I quit. And just walk out. Leave the, better yet, leave the cooler there. Because it, what it's going to do, it's going to throw everyone the hell off as to, wh- wh- was that a rule that, you know, before, were we allowed to drink at work? <laughs> Have we been allowed to drink at work for years? And it's just suddenly got, you're going to start the greatest chain reaction of people just wondering, what in the Sam hell just happened that pushed you over the edge? That was like, he brought a beer into work when he told him no. He stormed out. If you can kick over like the water cooler on your way out, even funnier. Better yet, take the water cooler. Just really, just have him standing there just going, what in the Sam hell? This guy brought beer into work and then somehow our boss became an asshole? What, the, what just happened here? That would possibly be the greatest thing. Seriously, if any of y'all film this, we will come to your house and do a special episode of this podcast from your house, because that will honestly be the greatest thing that has ever happened in the history of the internet. And hell, Nike may sponsor it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe that is uh, this episode for Hillbilly Therapy. I'm Jake Hill. I'm Dan Fraley. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here.